So one of the advantages of decision trees is the fact that we can graphically represent them. And here I'm going to show you how to graphically represent the results from this decision tree. Uh, before we can do the uh, re graphical representation, we have to do some, uh, uh, some preparation. And the very first thing that we are basically going to do is to create strings that are going to include the name of our features and also the uh, names of our possible outcomes. So what we are going to do is to create uh, the feature names and call it to be equal to uh, basically the names of the columns in our training data set. So this is how we do it. We are basically uh, are creating a uh, an array, call it feature names, and it is going to basically go over all the columns in the training data set, which includes the name of the, basically the variables of the uh, features, right? The name of the features and, uh, and, and put them, put the names only, the labels of the columns in this uh, features data set. So let me call it features uh, names. All right. The second thing that we have to do is to uh, create names for the outcomes. Right now, remember, the outcomes that we have are 0 and 1, right? Uh, but we want to turn them into, say, uh, disease and no disease, right? How are we going to do that? Remember, there are two things that have to be done. First of all, they should be turned into disease and no disease. And the second thing is that they are 0, 1. In, in numeric format, they have to be turned into string format. So first thing first, we are going to create a new data set. Uh, call it, say, Y-train str, which is going to be the same as our training data set, the Y-train data set. The only difference is that their types uh, of the data is going to be changed to string, right? So basically, y underscore train underscore uh, str data set is a data set that is exactly like the y train data set, with the difference that the uh, data types uh, in the uh, y underscore train underscore str data set are going to be string, right? As opposed to numeric data sets. That is the very first one. Now, the second step is to uh, change zeros to, say, no disease, and ones to one disease. So this is how you do it. You say, y train str, uh, and you say, y train str is equal to zero, oops, sorry, equal to zero, This should be two. Then turn it to say no disease, whereas the places where it is equal to one turn it to disease, right? So what this uh, two lines of code does is basically turns the uh, zeros to no disease and turns the ones to disease. And you just the very last step is to just say y train str is equal to y train str dot values. Right. So let's run this. It it runs perfectly fine. And let me just And you see, uh, I just printed the Y train SDR, and you see that this is an array, and you have all the uh, all the values only, right? Uh, so they've changed zeros to no disease and ones to disease, right? If I want to say Y train dot values. Let me also delete this. Okay, 
Now we are, we are ready to uh, basically uh, create our graph, and that is uh, through uh, graph viz or export underscore graph viz. So the way that we do it is again go to scalearn dot tree and import uh, export underscore graph viz. And now we say export underscore graph viz. Now there's, there are a bunch of options that we have to identify here. The very first thing is that you have to give it the name of the model that you want to export the graphics. And the model that we are going to do is called tree two. Remember we called it tree two because or tree that tree two, uh, because this was the second decision tree that we trained. So we say uh, tree two here, then uh, we have to define the name of the uh, exported file and we call it by out underscore file. We are going to call it say tree two dot dot and the dot is the name of the data file, uh, ty the type of the data file that we are going to create then we say feature feature names feature underscore names is going to be equal to uh, the thing that we just created here and I noticed the typo but it doesn't matter because it's just a name and then uh, we call class names is going to be equal to what we just created here Okay, let's run it and see if it runs. Export graph is my okay. Now it's uh, it's run. Okay, so it's created a file for us uh, in the basically a dot file for us. Uh, if you have any software that can display this file, you can go ahead and open it, and it's basically saved in the same folder that you have saved your file, uh, but you can also display it in uh, Python, and this is how you do it. You have to import the graph viz, so I say import graph viz, and you see the here that you have, uh, see that it does, has not found graph viz because it's not installed. So what I have to do is to first install it uh, the same way that I installed the other packages uh, through pip. So I come here and search for my command prompt, bring it here and I say pip install graph viz. And it starts downloading and installing. Now let's see if it works now. Okay, again, it's not here. Let me close this and open it again and see if it works that way. And like always, the problem is that I have a typo. Graph was so uh, because I'm in the Anaconda environment, I have to install the graph as within Anaconda. So let's see if it uh, works that way. So what you got to do here is Anaconda doesn't work here. Let's see. So I found this uh, this website that uh, describes how to install uh, Graphviz for the uh, Anaconda. Let me follow these steps and see if it works or not. So first, I'm going to the uh, Graphviz website and download it. Let's go with this one because I'm using the Windows. install it. And here I'm going 
going to add it to the path and see what happens. Okay, then it says uh, go for anaconda command prompt. Remember that this is different from the usual command prompt. This is the anaconda command prompt. And uh, type in pip install graphs. Okay, it seems that it's successfully installed it here. Let's see if it works here or not. Bam, it now worked, okay? So uh, just follow the steps that I did in order to install the graphs on uh, Anaconda environment. All right, I think I figured it out. So uh, in the same uh, uh, page that says how to do it, uh, no, not here. I found it on Stack Overflow. Somebody was saying that you have to add this line uh, to the user path. So you have to search for system environment, uh, or you can just type in environment in your command, and then you see that uh, edit the system environment variable window opens. This is it. And then you go on advanced environmental variables. Then you have the user variables up here and system variables down here. You for the you see user path you under the user variables you click on path you click on edit and then uh, copy and paste this here so uh, this is this is what you have to type in I just make it larger just in case you want to see what it says this is the path that you have to add to the user path which I already have, so I just cl close. And then in the system variables, again, you find path and then click edit and then add this to the user path as it's here. And then you click OK. Once you do that, uh, close your Anaconda and then open it again and it should be able to run now. This is what you have to type in order to be able to uh, visualize the graph now. So you just say with open 32.dot.dot .dot is the name of the file that you have already created with the export graph as function uh, as f, and you say dot underscore graph is equal to f dot read, and then you just say display graph viz dot source, and then dot graph that you just have defined it here, right? To do this, you're going to have your decision tree displayed for you. Make it a little bit smaller so that we can see it. There we go. Your, uh, so the things that we define here. So you see that class is written as no disease. It is because we define zero as no disease, right? And where it says class is equal to disease, it's because uh, we defined ones to be as equal to disease. So how do you read this tree? So the very first thing that uh, the tree splits is uh, based on the feature CP, and you have to, you, you can go and see what CP means in the in the uh, Kaggle dataset. And CP stands for chest pain, right? So whether chest pain is less or equal than 0.5, if it is true, then go and classify based on CA, in which CA is another feature that, what does CA meant? CA meant, uh, number of major vessels colored by uh, fluorosopy. And if CP was uh, larger than 0.5, then the uh, split is done based on age. And if and based on whether or not it's 
younger than 56 and a half years old or older than 56 and a half years old, right? So this is uh, how to, and, and you can continue, you know, uh, going down all the way uh, to the next, uh, to the next uh, nodes. So here, for example, after that, it looks at sex, whether it's uh, male or female, because remember, you know, uh, zero and ones were males or females. Uh, so less than uh, 0.5 is basically zero, right? Which were, I think, males. Uh, and more than that are females uh, and so forth. 